into one show. Oh. Paladin versus Warrior. Uh, we're going to go. I'm going to let Rory. You're our guest, man. You're up first, dude. Who won? So, in, um, I mean, obviously, in that particular presentation, if I'm going to be completely unbiased, I think that Summoners stole the show. Because I feel like people have been wanting uh, what that Summoner style was pretty much since whenever they began playing the game. There was a lot of people that uh, I got to t try out Final Fantasy XIV. Then they were like, oh, I'd like to play the Summoner. And I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, Summoner's great. It's a dot class. And they're like, a dot class? That's supposed to be summoning things, not applying dots. And when I saw that you could summon like Titan, Ifrit, Guru, and Titan, when he gets summoned, he actually does like the big AOE explosion where the screen like almost disappears. I was like, dude, this is not for me because I that like, look, my mage of choice is the red mage and that's probably never going to change because it's, it's the best mage. But like, <laughs> I was super happy for people. What, what do you like? What? <laughs> anyway, I was super happy for people Chris that uh, you know want to play Summoner. <laughs> people that want to play Summoner, like I was super happy for them, and I think that Summoner definitely stole the show. But for me, for my personal taste, obviously it was the Paladin because, like you know, I see Confetti. I'm, most of the stuff that they did before is stuff that's already in the game. So I'm like, okay, I know that, I know that. Then I see Confetti. Yeah, Confetti. That's good. You did it a little bit earlier, but that's fine. Then suddenly, oh, but here's another one. And I'm like, oh, and then and here's another one. I was like. Oh, and here's another one. It's like it's like the the meme from uh, Ed McMahon is like oh, and it falls down. <laughs> it's kind of the same thing for me. I love that. That was amazing. So Chris, who won? <laughs> so Summoner did steal the show, but the question was who won, Paladin or Warrior? And Paladin. I will say that Paladin was given giant, glowing, two-handed weapons that slashed from the sky like a, the world's largest fell cleave and was given a gap closer that can cover a actual gap. So Paladin became more of a warrior and that's a win. Like that's a huge win. <laughs> they learned from the best one and, and warriors like, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. And Paladin's like, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm going to do some of that stuff. Um, so all in all, I think Paladin, in my opinion, is the most convoluted rotation of the, th the four tanks, because I think it's the one that has the least forgiveness. If you get off, if you're mid encounter and you lose your spot and like, now your mana's screwed and then the goring blade is on a 21 second timer and like there's no room for recovery it's like just just wipe it up and do better next time as opposed to warrior is incredibly forgiving like just just make sure eye of the storms up reset yourself at the next inner release you're good you're good there's an on ramp and every 90 seconds we're going to drop that to every 60 seconds it could not be more casual for like just hanging out tanking things with a big old axe um so i think Paladin was due for the bigger change. Um, yeah. And it it feels like a good move. It does. It, it feels like Paladin got the bigger change. I don't know if it's a I don't know if it's a good move per se, because a lot of people, one of the things that they don't like about Paladin, and this was one of the things that I didn't like about Paladin when I was playing it, and was one of the reasons that was pointing me more towards Gunbreaker, is the magic rotation. It's weird. You're you're like this weird. melee class, and then suddenly it's like, oh, here's here's a magic rotation in the middle of your melee attacks, and you're just like, it's weird. Hi. And, and what did they do? They added more stuff into the magic rotation part of Paladin. And I'm like, okay, I see where this is going. But, but you lost the, the holy same... spam, right? Because it was Requiesce Cat when your mana's in, your, um, in theory, your mana's full. And then it's like, holy, 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 Confidior. And now it, it's... It depends. It depends on whether or not the Requiesce Cat finishers require mana or if they just like replace a one, two, three combo or something like that. It, it's all very dependent. It could still be holy spam. And then at the end, you just get more Requiesce Cat stuff. It could be that. I don't know. But it's I would rather not have the holy. I would rather not have the holy span if, if I could. Yes, I'd much prefer not to have it. Well, I mean, you're not going to get any. I mean, you have 100 percent empathy from there. Me there, because I would rather not play paladin. So, um, <laughs> I'm glad there are paladin mains. They, you know, it, it makes sense to have a, a sword and board class. Um, it just doesn't speak to me as awesome as, as like the big two handed, uh, like oh. dark knight. Dark knight and and warrior just feel like my biggest issue with with Gunbreaker is that the gun blades aren't big enough. Like it has nothing to do with their rotation. It has nothing to do with how they play for somebody that's not glamor is my end game. It's not glamor is not my end game. Why are gun blades not massive? Like, and why is it not more obvious that there's a gun portion? Like I want revolver blades, like grenade launcher with a buster sword. Like, you know, cause those cartridges, you only carry two and then you've got these tiny little revolver. No, no, no. Blades. Now you carry three. Right. Make it bigger. <laughs> Now you carry three, so we move from two to three. No, if they're 
it needs to be a machine gun if they're going to be that small. So I want these big, <laughs> like when I use a cartridge, like, like that's what I want from Gunbreaker. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like my biggest issue you with Gunbreaker the, is entirely cosmetic. You want the the burst strike feel whenever you get like uh, an, a, any skill they use as a cartridge. Because burst strike is the one that goes like, <laughs> like big explosion. That's what you want from everything. <laughs> and I, I, I get it. I completely get it. Like, I, I love the Gunbreaker. But uh, I'll also tell you what, like, for a while there, I was even considering maining Warrior as well. They have, out of all of the tanks that I've played so far, because I haven't played Dark Knight, I can't deal, like, I'm very much an animations guy. Like, I love animations. And the way that Dark Knight Warriors walk with their sword, I can't. I can't. It looks like you're pole vaulting all the time. Like, it looks like such an ineffective way to run around because, like, it would get stuck in a rock or something and you just, like, fall all over yourself, cut yourself up. It's like, I can't. I can't just play that class because the way they walk is ridiculous. So you've never fallen down the rabbit hole on YouTube and watched somebody make a real-life buster sword? Like, uh, no, but I, I know. There's so Final Fantasy about a buster sword that would take, like, three people to lift. Like, there's something <laughs> so Final Fantasy. It's not steampunk. It's not high fantasy. It's not low fantasy. It's just, like, Final Fantasy is the only one that's like, I have a sword that's 18 inches across, 62 feet long, and I'm just going to carry it around like it's nothing. It's no big deal. I'm going to... Some of these games, it's like, I'm going to wear, like, cloth robes with, like, a giant buster sword. Like... The Buster Sword is so iconically Final Fantasy to me that um, I want Dark Knights. Like when I'm trying to pick a Dark Knight sword, it's hard to pick one because it's the sword. The one. It's the yeah. sword. So at the but end of the day, like when you think about like Dark Knight Retirement Home, it's like a lot of back issues, a lot of just like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. well, well, guys, uh, like, oh my God. we saved the but, world, but at what cost? At what? Yeah, but they're already talking about like having a simulacrum up and like th those people are nuts. The the I thing have a is that fights with me. Sure you do. I've I've actually I've actually seen like justification for that. The way that they move is supposedly an accurate way because of like combat advantages and all of that stuff. But I just can't deal with it. And so I played uh, Paladin, Gunbreaker, and Warrior. And Warrior of those three has by far the best quest line. Like by far, I love the Warrior quest line. It is so good. It's amazing. I just redid the uh, the class quest quest line for Warrior. And um, that's good too. Like it's it's playful. There's we're building up to to fighting a big baddie, and um, it's weird to go back and do it through New Game Plus because there's a whole lot of like you do a quest and then you're immediately called. It, the issue with doing it through New Game Plus, and I've, and so I, this is the only job quest I've done through New Game Plus so far. So maybe they're all like this: is you talk to a guy in the job quest, and he goes, "I don't think you're ready." And then you complete the quest and you click and goes, I think you're ready. I think you're ready, Kunu. I want to ride big waves. Like immediately, you know, I can tell from the way you're standing, you've done some preparation. I so, didn't move. <laughs> so oh. did you guys stream the, the entire uh, thing as well? Yes. I made the very bad decision of streaming the whole presentation. When the presentation started at three in the morning in my time, it was, it was not a good idea. The next day, I was just like dead, completely dead. <laughs> it, not only but did we stream the presentation, but we, obviously we didn't start at 3 a.m., but we started, it was yeah. 9 o'clock uh, central time here in the U.S., but then we did the summary podcast immediately right after that, and then I went and edited all the content so that people, went, when they were waking Jesus. up, could wake up to the information. So I ended up going to bed around 5.30, my time, then I got up at uh, 9 to change diapers and help with kids. And then we had like, it was a busy weekend. It was, oh, a we made a whole weekend. event out of it. I got yeah. two, I got both my resplendent gathering weapons the day before I started at 8 AM and they were both about half done and I finished them both. And, uh, and so it was a 21 hour stream. So on that note, guys, cause this was the, uh, that welcome to our impromptu, uh, tank discussion. Uh, at the start of the podcast. If you guys uh, are, are not aware, we actually bring the podcast in MP3 form, Crystal Core Radio, wherever podcasts can be found, downloaded. And if you are enjoying the show, be sure to give it a five-star rating. That helps in in include, it helps increase its discoverability in the audio version. Now, this version of the podcast is also brought to you by John Psycho, Cordell, WG Productions, and Keelan. Thank you guys for being podcast legends. And then for Luke for making all of this possible with his like generous donation. So he gets a shout out. Uh, for the next year i said you sponsored the podcast for the year congratulations so we thank uh everybody for their support in the show guys rory Khan 
is an incredible content creator. Most people, like when we sit down to talk about podcasts, say, oh, I know him. He's the My Monster Hunter guy. But Rory <laughs> is also a huge Final Fantasy fan, a Paladin main. Uh, Rory, like obviously we just jumped into the end of the tank discussion, but uh, take a moment because there, there are still people who I know within our community ha haven't come across your content or might not know that you're an avid 14 player. Um, make a Take a second to reintroduce yourself and then we got lots to talk about with Walker. So I guess I'll just say how I got started into 14 and um, Chris is going to laugh at this, but basically I was playing Battle for Azeroth and that expansion is so atrociously bad, particularly if like me or someone who loves doing Mythic Plus. And you, you could actually see what went wrong there because like where my character logged out for the very last time before I tried out Shadowlands, it was in front of the weekly box. And I, I just made a decision there. It's like, look, dude, this is terrible. The reward system for this game is terrible. The balance for this game is terrible. I think I'm never going to play an MMO again. And I had people in my community that kept telling me, you should try out 14. You should try out 14. And I had played 14 back in like 2013. I actually interviewed one of the um, community managers before the launch of Realm Reborn because I was at E3 that year. And... Um, you know, so, so I tried it out and I played it like you would play WoW, right? I, I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to grab all these quests, do all these quests, mm -hmm. and then go back and grab more quests and repeat. And that's a terrible way to play, at least in my opinion. I think that's a terrible way to play Final Fantasy XIV. And so I, I, I burned out super fast. And then 2019, people told me, just play the main quest. Don't do anything else. Just play the main quest. And so I played it and I never stopped. I just never stopped. I love the game. It's amazing. But yeah, like you said, another thing that I do is a lot of Monster Hunter. Whenever there's uh, any Monster Hunter releases coming out, I play Monster Hunter because that might be one of my favorite games of all time. Simply because, you know, one of the things that you like, at least I tend to like it, I'm always like, you go in there, you get yourself gear, you upgrade your character, you become more powerful, and you just go on this loop of becoming more powerful and experiencing, you know, tougher fights and bigger challenges, stuff like that. And Monster Hunter at its core is exactly that. You kill a monster, you carve him for pieces, you make an armor out of his pieces, and then you go fight a bigger monster. And you do this until you run out of monsters to fight. So to me, it's all about just like, give me a, an, an ever increasing challenge, which is why I like Mythic Plus so much. But uh, yeah, and you know, I, I cover a wide variety of games, not just these two, but Final Fantasy 14, since I started in 2019, has definitely become one of my like staple games that I keep coming back to because it's, you know, it's it's everything that I would want out of an MMO right now because it respects your time instead of like putting you on this endless cycle of like forcing you to play. Like one of the best things about Final Fantasy 14 is that you can actually take a break mm -hmm. because like, oh, I cannot play Final Fantasy 14 if I want to. And what that does for players is you leave on a high note. You're like, hey, this was great. I'm going to take a break and I'll come back later. And you're always excited to come back. Whereas in, you know, other MMOs, you're like, Oh man, I'm so burned out of this. I can't play this anymore. Just stop. And then whenever it comes time to come back, you're like, oh, I remember last time. It was not good. I don't want to come back to this. Ugh. Make it go away. The key aspect of, of games that are designed to help you take a break is the game has to be really good. In fact, I had this discussion just yesterday about Destiny 2 specifically. It's like Destiny 2 seems to be as they've evolved, not this way originally, but kind of following a 14 model in that regard. It's like it's perfectly fine to take breaks and what comes back with destiny with same thing with final fantasy 14 is content is actually so good that rather than burn yourself out rather than stress yourself out rather than having these epic gamer moments where that are just like this is the worst and it's like you clearly have hit this line because more often than not the people who are the most critical of games that i've seen especially in the comment uh, comment section uh, it ties to be like, I've played 5,000 hours of this game. I've played 10,000 hours of this game and it sucks. And my mind goes interesting. Like that's, it's so interesting that after 10,000 hours, you have finally completed your review. There's gotta be like, when did it go bad for you? Like when did the milk spoil in that regards? And so I think Yoshi P's m mindset here is, is quite healthy because it's something that I think gamers need, but gaming is addictive like we get excited and, and especially online games in which that maybe our community is completely connected into it it is almost a harder thing to kind of step away from a game because of that social aspect but i think services like discord and you know as as the system evolves like we hopefully will see more of that ability for people to be flexible on like oh i play a kind of a collection of games and i kind of yeah. just you know 
here's my game for this quarter <laughs> or something like that. Um, it's healthier too if you yeah. just like play a couple of different games because it keeps games fresh. It keeps you feeling fresh, and whenever you come back to something like I'll play a little bit of Monster Hunter, then I'll come back to fourteen, then back to Monster, Hunter, then back to something else like play Tales of Rise recently. It's like you play a couple of them, and it keeps things a little bit fresh. What do you think, Chris? It's one of, it's one of the things that Final Fantasy has not quite mastered yet. Um, is is that they actually have enough content across fourteen that it could stay fresher like inclusively. Mm -hmm. um, I watched you doing, I guess it was like a week or two ago, you were doing some Eden. I think you guys like a raid roulette. And so you, you got put against Ramu Eden and I was, I was counting up the deaths in your party. <laughs> that and, was so good. And so like, I, I was, I was, I was like, let's see it. I was like, Oh, he, there's going to be a death to this next mechanic. And then the, and I was like, yes, we got two. And so we ended up with like 13 deaths and they got the clear. <laughs> and so we're just, I was just rejoicing in just the chaos that is, a forgotten fight and that's a fight from this expansion so it's possible that people yeah. who died have done that fight without dying before but have just forgotten like you just there's so many encounters that something just smacks you upside the head because you haven't done it in months possibly years mm -hmm. so we'll say like within you know that idea of freshness that's something that as we're here to talk about an upcoming expansion unreals is the first time we've seen them heavily leverage old content um, without having to make something truly new, right? Like Ramu, we had a Ramu fight and now the Eden one is, but that's a, it's a different fight. And mm -hmm. so it's effectively, it's, it's making a nostalgic callback asset wise, but it's, it's new boss models, new arena, new mechanics. It's new. So it might as well have been brand new in general. They were just being nostalgic there because of the way the storyline played out. Um, Unreal is the first time where it's like, okay, what if, what if these did allow you to kind of take that on? You talk about liking Mythic Plus. Yep. Um, you know, it has been asked over the last, we've been covering this game for five years. We've seen Yoshi P asked at least half a dozen times about Mythic Plus um, through different phrasings, extreme dungeons, hard man modes, uh, savage modes, scalable content, literally naming Mythic Plus. Um, one of those questions was asked directly by us to Yoshi P when we were given a chance to interview him. So we've, we've, we've seen a whole host of the answers. Um, and TLDR, the answer is no. Uh, and he, he has different reasons, um, just like the reasons they don't support DPS mods in the community. There's different reasons, and they can all be simultaneously true. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't have replayability come into the content. I think Blue Mage has been really clever at giving us replayability. So as we pivot towards talking about Endwalker here, um, you say coming over from Pete because BFA made you mad with Mythic Plus, but it's odd that you've now found a home in a community that not only doesn't have one, but is not getting one. Um, if they said yeah. if they do anything that's small man content, it would be tied to Deep Dungeon, and we do not have confirmation that there will be a Deep Dungeon update in Endwalker yet. 